the Houston Texans. Squandering the opportunity to have the first overall pick in the draft with this long touchdown pass on fourth and 20 with less than a minute to play. And then the Texans go for the win. They go for two. There's the touchdown. The two-point conversion is good, and the Texans get the victory. There it is. There goes the number one overall pick. It goes to Chicago. Congratulations, Lovey Smith. You won the last game of the year in your first season as coach of the Texans. Bad news, it's your last game ever as coach of the Texans. Statement from Cal McNair, statement from Nick Casario, the GM of the team. What a bizarre situation. And Coach Dungy tweeted about this last night. I mentioned it in the story that we posted at PFT. You've got a GM who has hired two coaches now and fired both of them after one year. Who wants that job? Who wants to be the next potential one and done? And what kind of weird holding pattern are they in? And this goes back, I think, to last year with the Brian Flores situation. I firmly believe, Miles, if Brian Flores does not file his lawsuit when he does, they hired Josh McCown to be their next head coach. That they wanted McCown. Now, that was a Jack Easterby thing, but it also may be a Cal McNair thing. And maybe they're going to go with Josh McCown now. I don't know. The Jeff Saturday, half a season with the Colts, helps open the door to doing something that is so far outside the box it should just be regarded as effing nutty. But And I love Josh McCown. He's just not ready to be an NFL head coach. He, has he been coaching at the college or pro level the last two years? I don't think so. What's he been doing to get himself ready for this job that we assume the Texans want to give him? But there's got to be a plan. At some point, when you've got paying customers that you expect – to fork over their hard-earned money, to fill your stadium, and buy overpriced popcorn, hot dogs, beer, and merchandise over and over and over again, lather, rinse, repeat, lather, rinse, repeat. At some point, you've got to have the coach that everyone believes is the guy that's going to be there for a while. Nobody really believed Lovey Smith was the guy that's going to be there for a while. Lovey Smith was the guy when they were considering the finalists last year, Josh McCown, Jonathan Gannon, and Brian Flores. Well, they're not going to hire Brian Flores because he sued the league. And then the Texans got sued on the back end for not hiring Brian Flores because clearly he was the best available candidate given the fact that he's a proven commodity as a head coach. And he's done a great job when he's had his opportunity with the Dolphins. They go off the board for Lovey Smith. Nobody thought this is a long-term answer. I didn't think they'd be dumb enough to keep him for only one year, but here we are, Miles. Two years, two coaches, one and done. Good luck, Texans. Finding a coach who has options to choose to become your next head coach. I mean, I don't know why you didn't think they'd be dumb enough to fire him after only one year. What in the world have the, the Texans done to make you think that they're a smart organization, that they're going to do something smart? Well, dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things, but sometimes you capture a, a glimmer of wisdom. And I thought at a minimum they'd wait to see who the new Jack Easterby is going to be. I don't know what Cal McNair is thinking. Look, This is the problem, Texans fans, and there are plenty of fan bases out there that are under this constant burden. You can't fire the owner. You can't do a public referendum on forcing the team to be put in receivership while some other billionaire more qualified to own the team comes along. The dysfunction in many of the bad teams traces all the way to the top. And Cal McNair, all due respect, has done nothing during the time that he has run the team that he inherited from his father, Bob, to make me think he's qualified and fit to be a capable and successful and competitive owner to the point where the other owners are happy to have him around because the good owners like to have a cluster of 10 or 12 that don't know what they're doing. It makes their lives a little bit easier to not be competing with high-end, functional franchises that are capable of winning any given Sunday because the Texans are one of the ones that clearly aren't. Yeah, no doubt. So, I mean, from that standpoint, I will say the thing I said last year at this time after they fired David Cully, do it. Hire Josh McCown. I dare you, Texans. Have the strength of your own convictions and just go ahead and do it so then we can rip you for it and then it'll work or it won't work. But let's just see you do it. Go on ahead. Try. Cal McNair is the guy, the kid, who was determined to jump off the high dive at the pool. Determined. Spent all winter saying, this is the year I'm going to do it. I'm going to climb, not the low dive. Low dive, I've done it. This is the year, because you got 
I know the pool that I went to growing up, you got the two low dives on the side, you got the high dive in the middle. I am going to climb all the way to the top of the high dive. I'm going to walk out on the edge of the board. I'm not going to turn around and walk back. I'm not going to go back down the ladder halfway up. I am going to climb out to the edge of that, and I am going to do it. However it turns out, I don't care. I am finally going to do it. Do it. Climb up the ladder, walk out to the edge of the board, and jump off into the Josh McCown pool. If that's the guy you want to hire, do it. Does it make Brian Flores' case stronger? Absolutely. So what? You just got 30 settlements thanks to Deshaun Watson. Go do your thing. If this is the guy you want, you're the owner of the team. Act like the owner. Be the owner. Hire the guy you want. Tell the rest of us to go screw ourselves, Cal. Yep. Show some leadership. Show some moxie. Show some guts. Jump off that diving board if you're going to do it because we're sick of waiting for it. Amen. Yeah, I got nothing to add to that. All right. Well done. Sean McVay. Oh, by the way, by the way, I <laughs> I don't know and if this – Yeah, let me, let me just add one more thing. Can we please stop thanking guys we've just fired? Oh, yes. Can uh, we yeah, please that's stop a, with this oh crap? My gosh. What is this? They just announced yeah. the firing. Thank you, Thank Coach you. Smith. Really? Yeah. Thank you, Coach Smith. Now get I mean, leaped. Come on. Like, what are you doing? I it is such a I don't know what it is. Whether it is lacking in self-awareness or passive aggressive. I hope it's at least passive aggressive because that would imply there's a strategy to it other than, well, we fired the coach. Let's break out the thank thank the coach. I mean, they're so used to it now. Thank you, Bill O'Brien. Thank you, David Culley. Thank you, Lovey Smith. Thank you, Josh McCown. Thank you, next guy. It's they, I, they, and, and I had somebody say, oh, the social media teams operate completely independently. Well, if they do, that just shows how dysfunctional the team is because they don't go rogue and just feel like doing whatever they do. Somebody tells them what to do or what not to do. So somebody well, either told them to do this or didn't tell them not to do it. Either way, can we stop thanking the people we've just fired? We, it doesn't the change the fact that you fired them. Who the hell said they operate completely independently? What kind of BS is that? If they do, they don't operate for very long. Uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come on. If it's somebody who's worked on multiple, that's not true. Sorry. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.